Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we have a new OLED monitor again from ASUS and this is the PG27AQDM Sweep OLED monitor. And before anything else, I would like to say thanks to our friends from ASUS Philippines for making this review possible. Without further ado, let us try to check what are the things that are included inside the box. the documentation and we have here some okay we need this yes actually this might have been reviewed and we're still just checking reviewing this one right now and the information this one actually is included on the side of the screen okay next one would be a handy bag okay for the handy bag we have here sweet pages okay it's a power cord i believe this should go to a power brick Okay, and we're going to use that one later on. And of course, what else do we have here? I believe this is the lighting, the one under the monitor. You can change it as well and you can create your own. Let's try to look at it later on. Okay, and as you can see, we have additional for the bottom part for the lighting effects. You can create your own logo in here. Okay, we have another power adapter and we have here USB cable and this one would be display port cable. We're going to use this one later on. Okay, that in here. And here is the power brick. Use the power cord earlier that we had shown you. Okay, it's 90 watts. Okay, and we also have here a an HDMI cable as well. Aside from the display port cable, we have an HDMI cable. Okay, and what else do we have here? This one is, I believe, a uh, mounting bracket. Here, the base or the stand, and of course, this is the base is the fit for the base. Okay, and. I think this is actually really easy to set up. Okay, and lock. We have here the one at the bottom. Yes, this is where you place the cup. And it should be located here. Okay, let's set this aside for now. Okay, it's locked, so it's not in the middle. Okay. Then after that one, let's pull this out. Okay. And there you go, guys. I hope it's still okay. Yes, there are minor fingerprints. Okay. And there you have it, guys, for the monitor. Now for the specification, panel size is 26.5 inches with aspect ratio of 16 is to 9 with 1440p resolution, supports HDR10, with a max refresh rate of 240Hz, while for the I.O. ports, it has one display port 1.4, two HDMI port 2.0, USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A, capable of swivel, height adjustment, wall mount, and it can actually pivot 90 degrees, our RGB lightning effect, and actually there's a lot more. I'll just include a link on the description below for the full specification. Guys, I have this monitor for quite a while now, and I still enjoy using it. Even though it is not an ultra-wide monitor like the previous ASUS OLED monitor that we have tested, that was an amazing monitor. But don't get me wrong, the performance of this monitor is still great. It has the deepest black, and it produces vivid color as well. So the details of an object in a dark scene actually pops out. Try to check the video that I have created. You can see that the soft rings in can pops out for the upper background is totally black. And honestly, it might sound biased. So I tried to have the top BG3A monitor that I have and do a side-by-side -side test. And also, ask my wife, which monitor produces a better image? And she chose the OLED monitor on the left without knowing which one is actually running at OLED or the BG3A. I hope like for this one, you can still distinguish 
the difference. But the black on the right side is more lighter. And when you try to check the cans, it is actually darker on the right side compared to the left. For gaming, hands down. I really love the OLED display and I apologize for the sample video for I think it is still a little off. I'm still finding ways on how to capture it properly. I tried manually focusing the camera, a lot of things for the camera, and eventually I tried using the iPhone to capture to show you the actual thing that I'm seeing, but I think it's still a little off. I hope you can see it in person that all the display for this monitor, it is actually amazing. So aside from that one, guys, this monitor is actually better than the top VG3A that I have. Aside from an OLED display, this one actually uses 240Hz refresh rate compared to the VG3A that I have that only uses 180Hz refresh rate. Pro productivity, media creation, my wife and I love using it as well. For we are using Adobe Illustrator and Premiere Pro, while for office work, like maybe a lot of documentation using Microsoft Word, you might get some text clarity issue but because of the sub-pixel layout, but still, it is still readable on my end. For the monitor settings, we can use the joystick at the back of the monitor, and I'll try to show you on what are the things that we can configure. Okay guys, you can actually click the button at the back of the monitor, and under gaming, you have here adaptive sync. For adaptive sync, you have G-Sync compatible, you can turn on or turn off this feature. And aside from that one, at the bottom, we have here Game Plus. For the Game Plus, these are additional features. Like for example, you have your FPS counter. If you turn on this one, you'll have an option to see a number or a bar graph at your monitor to see the actual FPS that you're getting on your monitor. And aside from that one, you also have your crosshair and sniper. This is actually useful if you're playing first-person shooter. It will create a single dot in the middle for the sniper for the crosshair let's try to check yes you can actually choose the crosshair that you want like for example if you choose this one okay i hope you can still see that one there is a crosshair in the middle to help you with your first person shooter game and aside from that one going back to game plus we have here timer stopwatch and display alignment then we have the next one is the game visual for the game visual these are preset for the configuration of the settings or brightness and contrast of the monitor like for example we are using rts rpg mode on this one let's try to change it maybe for example cinema mode okay as you can see the color temperature of the monitor actually changes it actually depends on the presets that you want to choose and you can also have your own user mode then say from that one shadow boost for shadow boost this is actually helpful in dark places for your FPS shooter so you can able to see people hiding in the dark more clear than an ordinary monitor without this shadow boost. Then next one, we have image. Okay, for the image, this is the manual configuration if you want to adjust the brightness, uniform brightness, aspect ratio, blue light filter. These are the other options for changing aside from the preset that we have changed a while ago for the game visual. And next one will be the color. Yes, you can adjust the color display space, sRGB or DCI-P3. And of course, the color temperature, if you want it, maybe 9300 or maybe let's try to change to 4000. As you can see, it actually differs on the color temperature. Then saturation, you can change this as well. Six axis saturation and of course, gamma. The next one is in input select. We have set it to auto detection. We have DisplayPort and HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. Then for the lightning effect, as hope you can still see this one. This one for the rear cover, it's at the back of the monitor while for the base. If you want to turn off that one or there, uh, lower the brightness, you can change it. Maybe let's try to change this one to off. Okay, there are no more LED lights at the bottom. Okay, so for now, hi. Then aside from that one, we have here my favorites. You can create shortcuts and customize settings. And of course, for the system setup. This is where you can actually change the language, sound, USB setup, power indicator, power key lock, screen protection, power setting, and other things as well. Okay, aside from the button at the back of the monitor, you can also download the ASUS Display Widget Center that can be downloaded on ASUS website. Under here, you will be able to do the same things that we'll be able to do using the button, but let's try to explore what are the different things. Like for example, we have here the game visual. This is the presets that we have shown you earlier when you change the presets, it will change the brightness, contrast, saturation, color, temperature of the display image. 
and these are the presets that you can use and aside from that one for the game plus we have also discussed this a while ago we have here the crosshair timer fps counter and display alignment next one would be oled care under oled care this is the most useful thing to take care of your oled monitor to make it live longer like for example you have here the screen saver it will automatically adjust the brightness so it will actually prevent your screen from having burn in for the images that is not moving or static on your monitor and auto brightness uniform brightness target mode pixel cleaning for pixel cleaning if you already have a burn in on your monitor this will be helpful to remove those burn in i'll try to show you that one later on and we also have here the multi-screen setup for the multi-screen if you want to set up this way you can choose this one for the multi-frame and you also have kb hat key settings Lastly, for the system settings, we have here the display HDR. You can turn that on and auto hide taskbar in desktop mode. You can enable that one as well. And background color team, if you want it light or dark or choose the theme for the default app mode. And aside from that one, we have your power setting mode, standard mode, or power saving mode. And that's it for the Asus Display Widget Center. Now for the issue that I have encountered, honestly, I was really scared when I got home and saw the computer powered on with a movie playing on a small window and it was running for more than nine hours and to my surprise and the most thing that i feared there is already a burn in on the monitor and i tried to run some color tests just to verify it is a burn in and you can still clearly see the burn in on the color test you can see the desktop icon the window box and during the time i was already thinking on how will i explain it to asus that the loan unit has a burn-in and it's my fault. Then I try to remember what are the things that I can do and I remember that there is a pixel cleaning tool on Display Widget Center. Then I tried to use that tool. It actually took a couple of minutes only and luckily it was not a permanent damage. That tool was able to remove the annoying burn-in on the monitor. Try to run some tests and as you can see there is no burn-in already. During that time, I was really for it was removed because remember, this is just a loan unit for me to review. It was not mine to begin with, so I can actually claim for warranty. But guys, if I or you bought this monitor, we should actually be worry free for burn in because this monitor is now covered under ASUS warranty. The burn in, yes, it is covered. That is actually great. Thanks, ASUS, for that one. Now for the verdict, this monitor is great, produces a really vivid color and deepest black and does not take too much space for it is only 27 inch monitor and perfect for my small workstation. Now will I actually recommend it? If you are like me who loves to watch uh, movies, videos, uh, series, anime, play games and want to have the best image display on the screen, this one is definitely for you. You might actually spend a little more compared to an IPS or PN panel with the same refresh rate. But guys, the experience, the viewing experience on an OLED monitor is definitely great compared to those IPS or PN panel. And even though it has a higher price tag, you don't have to worry anymore about burn-in like before. Because in general, we know that OLED panels are really expensive and most and for burn-in is not covered under warranty but luckily enough we don't have to worry about that burn-in and we are not wasting our money because that burn-in is now covered under ASUS warranty. In my own opinion this monitor deserves a 5 star 4. I can't really see any cons on this monitor. Aside maybe for the text clarity for small text for it is already given as a hardware limitation for the pixel layout. And most probably this kind of monitor, an ROG monitor, is intended for uh, gaming, movie watching, media creation. So if I have, or if you have the money to spare, consider this OLED monitor. Because guys, hands down for the image quality and the experience that you'll get using this monitor. And I think that will be all for now. If you have comment and suggestion, comment down below or message me at JK Chavez on FB. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe and bye.